Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Rampant Design Tools, and I am back again with another Media Composer tutorial, this time taking a look at the very cool 4K Studio Flares package. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how to create this very cool looking animation literally in a matter of minutes without having to leave the comfort of your Media Composer timeline. Now, like I said, we're going to be using the Studio Flares bundle. What we're also going to do is I'm going to show you how to use some third-party plugins to create this look. Now, if you don't happen to have any of the third-party plugins that I'm showing you, you can get in and create mats from the Rampant Design Tools elements. Now, if you need to know how to do that, feel free to head on over to the Rampant Design Tools website and check out my Flash Transitions tutorial where I show you how simple it is to pull mats from these elements. Now, like I said, we're going to be using some third-party effects one of which you might very well already have in your toolkit. And the effect I'm talking about is Avid Effects. Now I'm going to be using the Boris Red 5.5 version of it, but remember, Avid Effects is basically just Boris Red 5 rebranded for your Media Composer timeline. Now the other effects I'm going to show you how to do it with is using Boris Continuum Complete's composite effect as well as using an effect from Sapphire, Generate Sapphire. So if you happen to have any one of these effects, it's going to be very simple for you to do this effect. Okay, short introduction here. Let's just get into Media Composer and let's get started. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer. Now I am using the most recent version of Media Composer, version 8.2. And you'll see that what I've done is I've actually created a title here. Now this might actually look like it is a 3D title and you would actually be correct, it is. I created this title simply using the Marquee Title Tool which you can actually create 3D extruded text with. So what I'm gonna do is just create a very basic animation. We're just gonna have the Rampant Design Tools word mark just moving very slowly towards the screen. So let's get in and let's do that. What we're gonna do is just come in and we're just going to add some keyframes in here for scaling. Don't need the keyframes for everything else, so let's just put our scaling, let's just put it down somewhere at about, I don't know, 95. Because I don't want this move to be anything too crazy. Okay, there we go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out using an effect that most Media Composer editors who've upgraded from version 7 will already have at their disposal. And I'm talking about Avid Effects. Now, like I said in the intro, I'm going to be using Boris Red 5.5. What's important to keep in mind is that, that the technique that I'm going to show you is going to work exactly the same inside of Avid Effects. Okay, so the first thing that I did was actually I didn't add a Studio Flares element at all. What I did was I actually found some very cool cinematic dust effects. I love these effects here. And what we're going to do is I just created this element to be about five seconds long. So I'm not going to be too picky about where things start and stop. So what I'll do is I'll just mark this entire clip and let's just drop it in. And you can see, got a very cool look here that we obviously want to do a transfer mode to so that we can remove the black and have the bright parts of the dust affect our title. So let's do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to head on into the effects palette right here, Command and 8 on the Mac, Control and 8 for all my Windows friends out there. And now if you're using Avid Effects, you're going to find it right up at the top of the effects palette. Now for me, like I said, I'm using Boris Red 5.5. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the Boris Red for Avid real-time filter right here. Like I said, if you have Avid Effects, take that Avid Effects filter, simply drag it and drop it down onto the cinematic dust element, just like such. Now, nothing is gonna happen and that's perfectly okay. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step into effects mode by hitting Shift and Y on the keyboard. If you don't have effects mode mapped on your keyboard, don't worry about it. You can always find it right up here at the top of the timeline or you can find it right over here in the composer window. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to launch the user interface I know this might look very daunting, especially if you, if you haven't gotten into Boris Red or if you haven't gotten into Avid Effects before, but when you see how we're going to set this up and how you can basically take this one effect and just use it over and over again, I guarantee you're going to be doing it all the time. Now you'll see in here I've got two layers. I've got Video 1 and Video 2. Now Video 1 is being represented by my uh, cinematic dust effect, and if I turn that layer off, you'll see there's my text underneath it. So what I want to do is I want to make sure that with video one selected, we're going to get in and apply that transfer mode. And we're going to apply an additive transfer mode. And you'll see that I have a tab up here called appropriately enough composite. I'm simply going to click on it. And you'll see that if I take the apply mode and drop it down, I now have access to all of the apply modes. And the one that I want, of course, is add. Now, as soon as I do, you're going to see that the black is not exactly black anymore. It's a little bit washed out. No problem. What we can do is simply come in 
So I'm just going to come back to the beginning here. What I want to do is just make sure that in my project settings that my hold parameter values is turned on just so that nothing is going to be animated here. And I'm just going to adjust the contrast a little bit just to bring those blacks back down just like that. Okay. Now all I have to do is basically say apply and guess what? That additive transfer mode is now applied in my timeline. And you can see that it's actually getting in and helping that affect when those uh, when the uh, dust moves over top of the rampant design tools word mark very cool okay okay now because of the way that we're doing this technique what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna collapse these layers down I'm simply gonna take the layers now actually before I do that what I do want to do is instead of going into avid effects or Boris red 55 every time to apply the same effect all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step back into effects mode and we're simply gonna take that effect and I'm just gonna drag it right over here into my bin and we're going to call this add transfer mode okay just like such okay I can simply close now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this entire timeline and I'm going to press F9 on my keyboard which is my shortcut for collapse now if you don't have it mapped you could simply get in to the command palette here let's see the command palette right there there we go what you're going to do is you're going to come to the other section and you're going to find collapse right here and you can map it to whatever key you want maybe you want it in the composer window or on your keyboard and once we have that collapse down what we're going to do is we're going to take our next cinematic dust effect just to you know give it a little bit of variety here and we're going to do the exact same thing i'm going to take that additive transfer mode we're going to take it and apply it and we now have both of these dust effects. You can actually see them right here. There's the two different ones. We've got the bright orange one and a little bit of the duller one right there. Very cool. Okay. So now we're ready to get in and add our lens flare. What I'm going to do again is I'm just going to collapse these down just like such. And let's find a very cool flare to work with here. I like this one's not bad. Let's see what other elements I've brought in here. We'll just double click this one actually looks very nice why don't we go with this one okay again all i'm going to do is simply hit t on the keyboard we're going to come to our topmost layer i'm just going to drop it in again exact same effect look nothing i'm not reinventing the wheel or anything like that there we go as soon as i drop it in there we now have it ready to go and you'll see that it is actually affecting the layer because as it gets a lot brighter we lose that texture off the rampant design tools exactly like what would happen if we took a super huge bright light and shone it on that text and it was a little bit reflective we would lose that and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give this a very quick render here and the great thing is, is that you'll see that these are actually real time so depending on you know the speed of your system you'd actually be able to get in and play this in real time but what I'm going to do is just give this a quick render I'm going to come up I'm going to hit the home key on the keyboard simply hit play and we now have this awesome looking animation ready to go in whatever project we might want to use it for very cool and what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually just going to remove that effect here because I want to show you that if I actually come into the sapphire effects now believe it or not this sapphire uh, bundle that I have installed here is actually version 6 so this is a couple versions ago but you'll see that if I come into the composite section I have an effect called S layer if I take S layer, drag it down, drop it onto my shot. Now this is a blue dot, so keep that in mind. I am using version six, so it is a couple versions ago. But you'll see that I can actually come right up here and I can switch the mode from normal to be additive. And we now have the exact same look that we just created with Avid Effects, but now being done with Generate Sapphire. Now again, like I said, please keep in mind that this is an older version of Sapphire, so that's why we have the blue dot. But I did want to show you how flexible this effect is. And again, if I wanted to get in and use Boar's Continuum Complete instead, no problem. All I need to do is simply head on up to the BCC category of effects. I'm going to head into Key and Blend. I'm simply going to come into Composite right here. I'm going to drag it and drop it down onto my shot. Once it's applied, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here. I'm going to come to my Apply Mode. I'm going to come down to Add, just like such. And again, we now have the exact same effect created very quickly and very easily. Now, before I wrap this lesson up, there is something important that I do want to remind you of. Now, I was talking about the fact that we're using studio flares, but what's important for me to point out is that this is actually 4K studio flares. And as you'll see by my project that I'm working in, I'm working in a 1080p 23976 project, meaning that the size of the frame is 1920 by 1080, whereas the size of the 
uh, 4K studio flare is about 4,000 pixels wide, so it's almost double the size, which actually gives us a lot of flexibility inside a Media Composer. What I'm actually going to do here is I'm just going to remove the effect here, and you'll see that this is pretty much the full frame version of the actual flare itself. But because I AMA linked to this 4K element, I do have the ability using frame flex to actually get in and choose different parts of the frame because maybe I don't want to see the whole, you know, the full frame part of this element. Maybe I just want to focus in on this very cool beam of blue light coming from the upper left hand corner. Well, no problem. Let's just find that effect again here. There we go. Perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on that element and I'm going to come down to source settings. Inside of source settings, I want to come to frame flex. You'll see that the element is actually 4096 pixels wide by 2160 high. It's actually an aspect ratio of 1.9 to 1. And like I said, instead of focusing on the whole frame, or more or less the whole frame, I'm going to focus on just the upper left hand corner to create this very cool looking blue look across the image. So all I'm going to do is basically just zoom in on this element. You'll see as soon as I do that, it immediately updates here at the bottom. Now what I can do is actually drag through to actually see what I'm going to see. And I'm liking this. I think this is actually going to look very cool. So let's try this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that. Now what's important to keep in mind is that when I apply it, it's not going to update what is in your timeline. If you want to update what's in your timeline, you can actually step into effects mode. You can come into the frame flex section and you can zoom in from here. But because I might want to use this flare over and over again, that's why I adjusted it inside of the bin. But I want to show you the flexibility of being able to adjust the clip itself or to be able to adjust it in the bin so that every time it's applied, you don't need to go in and rejig your frame flex. So all I'm going to do here is instead of rejigging it in my timeline, let's just take this and let's just drop it back in here. Okay, again, a very different look. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that additive transfer mode. I'm simply going to grab it, drag it, and drop it down. Take a look at what we have now. Very different than what it looked like originally. I'm just going to again give this a quick render and you'll see in a matter of seconds I can now play this back and we now have a very different but very cool Studio Flares look right from within our Media Composer timeline. So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can post them up on Twitter at Rampant Design or on our Facebook page at facebook.com slash rampantmedia. And don't forget, we have a whole bunch more tutorials and you can check out our entire product line at rampantdesigntools.com.